Welcome back, eighth grade. We're on week 11, and we're talking about electrons and energy. As I mentioned yesterday, the first two days are gonna be talking about electrons and atomic models. And the last three days, we'll be talking about our new unit, energy. So today, we're gonna to be talking about a new atomic model. We will be able to, by the end of this discussion, explain the electron cloud atomic model as it compares to the previous mo atomic models. The fan pictured here is turned off in the photo on the left and running at high speed in the photo on the right. In the right-hand photo, the blades are moving so fast, it's very difficult to distinguish between the blades. You can't tell where any given blade is at any given moment. In some ways, rapidly moving fan blades are similar to electrons moving about the nucleus of an atom. Like fan blades, electrons move very quickly, and we can never tell exactly where they are. If that's the case, how can we represent electrons in models of an atom? Until about 1920, scientists accepted Niels Bohr's model of the atom. This model, negative electrons circle the positive nucleus at fixed distances from the nucleus, called energy levels. You can see the model here for an atom of the element nitrogen. Bohr's model is useful for understanding properties of elements and their chemical interactions. However, it doesn't explain certain behaviors of electrons, except for in those simplest atoms, like the hydrogen atom. In the mid-1920s, an Austrian scientist named Erwin Schrodinger thought that the problem with Bohr's model was restricting the electrons to specific orbits. He wondered if electrons might behave like light, which scientists already knew had properties of both particles and waves. Schrodinger speculated that electrons might also travel in waves. So how do you pin down the location of an electron in a wave? Hmm, interesting question. Think about it just for a moment. Pause the video. Do you have an answer? Great, let's compare it. So you can't, you can't specify the exact location of an electron. However, Schrodinger showed that you could at least determine where an electron is most likely to be. Schrodinger developed an equation that could be used to calculate the chances of an electron being in any given place around the nucleus. Based on his calculations, he identified regions around the nucleus where electrons are most likely to be. He called those regions orbitals. As you can see here, orbitals may be shaped like spheres, dumbbells, or even rings. In each case, the nucleus of the atom is at the center of the orbital. Schrodinger's work on orbitals is based is the basis of the modern model of the atom, which scientists call the quantum mechanical model. The modern model is also commonly called the electron cloud model. That's because each orbital around the nucleus of the atom resembles a fuzzy cloud around the nucleus, like the ones shown of this helium atom. The densest area of the cloud is where the electrons have the greatest chances of being. So a quick question. In the model here, where are the two helium electrons most likely to be? Well, we just said that. The two electrons are most likely to be inside the sphere closest to the nucleus where the cloud is darkest. So let's summarize. Bohr's model of the atom, in which electrons circle the nucleus at fixed energy levels, cannot explain all of the behaviors of electrons. In the 1920s, Erwin Schrodinger proposed that electrons travel in waves, which means their exact positions cannot be determined. He developed an equation to calculate the chances of an electron being in any given place. Using his equation, he identified regions around the nucleus called orbitals, where electrons are most likely to be. Orbitals are the basis of the electron cloud model of the atom. This model is still accepted by scientists today. So, how is the electron cloud model 
different or similar to previous atomic models? If you can explain this, you're doing great. If not, feel free to go back and view the video one more time. 